back. Despite the serious new allegations against former President Donald Trump, new polling shows that Republican voters are more concerned about that indictment being politically motivated than his actions potentially being a national security risk. In the latest CBS News YouGov survey, when asked which of the two, which of the two concerns, 76 percent of likely GOP primary voters say they are more worried about the indictment being politically motivated. Just 12 percent say they are more concerned about the possible national security implications. Furthermore, if it is proven that Trump took classified documents containing military or nuclear secrets, only 38 percent of likely Republican voters say that would be a national security risk. Among the rest of the country, that number is up to 80 percent. And overall, 61 percent of likely Republican voters say the new charges will not change their view of Trump. Joining us now, communication strategist and former aide to House Speakers Ryan and Boehner, Brandon Buck. He is now an MSNBC political analyst. Brandon, great to see you. Let's just start right there. What's your reaction to all of that polling? Yeah, it's remarkable, but it also shouldn't be surprising. I mean, there have been years and years of groundwork laid by Donald Trump to make the case that the Department of Justice and the FBI are corrupt. They're out to get him. You know, all of the deep state, deep state stuff we always talk about. Um, and it's also important to appreciate that a lot of Republican voters get a lot of this information very differently, uh, you know, whether it's certain networks they watch or whatever it may be. There is a very deeply held sense that there are forces in Washington who are out to get Donald Trump. This polling like that doesn't just happen by accident. It doesn't just happen based on what just happened. It's been years. So that's what makes it so hard um, to hold him accountable. And that's what makes it so hard for some of his uh, the folks running against him in this primary to navigate and how to actually take advantage of this situation. Yeah, it's a it's a great point, Brandon. Just like he did with the false claims of, a, of election interference, of a rigged election, he planted the seeds of the big lie years in advance. And here, he's been chipping away at the Americans' faith in their institutions, including the DOJ, for many years as well. So you just mentioned the 2024 Republican primary candidates. How do they approach this? And are they playing to win? Yeah, I'm actually really curious, uh, starting to question that uh, for, for several of them. Look, if your goal through all of this is to preserve your standing with Republican voters, I get it. Like, it's actually a slam dunk. Do what, do what a lot of them are doing, which is explain it away, talk about Joe Biden, talk about Hillary Clinton. That is definitely the safe place to be if your goal is to uh, be a, in good standing with Republican voters right now. But if your goal is to defeat Donald Trump in this race, I just simply don't understand it. I mean, this is one of the biggest moments that's going to happen in this entire primary. And you have so many of them who are running, basically running interference, pr providing excuses, trying to downplay it. I, I simply don't understand why you're running. Your, your goal is to defeat him. You would think you'd have to take him on. And I, and, I, and I just encourage some of these candidates to think, what would Donald Trump do in this situation? I can't imagine that he would make excuses for his candidates. He would make them answer for it. Uh, so I understand why some of them don't want to do it. But if that's really your goal, to stay in good standing, you probably shouldn't be in this race in the first place. Especially by staying in the race, you dilute the field and make it easier for Trump, who, of course, has uh, that base of support. We should note that some of these candidates have already pledged to pardon Trump were he to be convicted uh, and they to be elected. So do you think there's any chance this could change? I mean, Tuesday is going to be a significant moment in American political history, a former president in a courtroom facing federal charges. Could that image potentially change things for a, a Pence or a DeSantis or one of these other candidates? I think there is a chance that over the, over time there can become a question of whether this is actually a person who can get elected. Mm. And I think there are real questions about that. And, and uh, I try not to put too much, uh, give too much credit to, to uh, either Republican or Democratic voters, really, on the question of electability. But it's a real issue. But it will only be a real issue if some of his opponents make people confront that question. If you talk about it, if you say, is this the type of person who could actually defeat Donald Trump? One of the problems that Ron DeSantis, uh, for example, has had, who's tried to make that argument, I think, is that there are plenty of polls that show Donald Trump within striking distance or even beating Joe Biden in a hypothetical matchup. So you really need to chip away at that. If your goal is to say, I'm more electable than Donald Trump, here's a great opportunity to say, this may not be a person who's going to get elected if he's potentially facing jail time. But so many base Republican voters never hear that conversation. That's why it's really incumbent upon his opponents, I think, to bring that up and force the question.
Yeah, the DeSantis campaign has sort of whispered to allies and, and reporters alike saying, hey, we think that it's these, indict these criminal investigations could help take Trump down, but they haven't moved on it yet. Two indictments already. There could be more. We'll have to see if the GOP primary field changes tactics. Brandon Buck, Brandon Buck, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And thanks to all of you for getting up way too early with us on this Monday morning. Big week ahead.